All right, everyone, what's going on? Good morning, good morning. <clears throat> Happy Thursday. Hope you guys are having a good week. Hope you guys are doing well. Taking some good trades. I asked you guys today, what do you want to talk about? What would you like to discuss today? What do you want me to go over? A couple of things I want to go over, right? And um, the first thing is... um. Couple of things going on in the crypto market. They're trying to create this FUD, right? This this FUD, this fear, right? Um, in regards to what's happening in the markets, just just to create a fear in the market. We see it every time, right? And uh, the one going on right now is going to be with KuCoin and the fact that the um the SEC is starting to come after these exchanges that are listing these assets and now they're calling them securities, right? Uh, you guys probably have, I don't know if you guys heard about it or not, but I'm going to pull it up here for you. All right. Um, I, oh, you know what? We can even find it here. All right. Um, I want you guys to take a look at a couple of coins. Somebody had given me this coin before and I was waiting for it to be listed somewhere and have some, um, I wasn't too, um, content about its ICO, but now that it's live on, on, um, CMC and coin gecko, um, I might go ahead and get into it. It is a BNB project. I'll go ahead and let you guys know about it. But here's what I want to take a look at, right? And it comes to... Uh, did I refresh this? All right. And it comes to the news. Here, I'll pull it up. So SEC, uh, Qcoin. All right. So what's going on with the SEC? All right. The SEC, again, is coming out. Uh, crypto exchange Qcoin is violated anti money laundering laws, yada yada yada. So they're they're under investigation now. If you still have money on Qcoin, um, I don't suggest you keep your money on Qcoin. I mean, I've been saying that for the longest. I don't trust Qcoin. Uh, Qcoin to me has been very iffy. All right. Um. So yes, they're aiming to go after Ethereum, but they also listed a couple of other assets in there. Um, as well. Um, I haven't really read much into it. I just know they had they had a whole list. All right. So number one is going to be um for prominent global cryptocurrency exchange Qcoin, and two of its founders criminally charged with Bank Secrecy Act, right, and unlicensed money transmission offenses. So that they're, they're accusing it of money laundering, pretty much, right? With Qcoin, that's one. So again, I would suggest any money you have in Qcoin, crypto, stable coins, whatever. Just do your best to get it out of there. Right now, it is. Um, I mean, I've I haven't trusted them in a long time, so I don't mess with um <clears throat> with Qcoin. But um, SEC ETH security. So this is what I wanted to look uh for you to look at, right? And uh, the Ethereum price stuck as it awaits SEC classification. So the SEC. Uh, is cl is classifying Ethereum as a security, okay? And again, they they do this right. It's just it's just poking the bear, seeing what they can get, and uh, we're seeing this starting to happen more and more, right? There was a couple of coins they threw in. I'm trying to see if um, oh, here we go. Maybe this one will tell me. SEC is probing crypto companies in Ethereum investigation as hopes for ETF dim. So. I'm I'm glad they said that because that's what that's what I think this is, right? Uh I think the SEC right now is uh kind of going through this this phase where they didn't expect crypto ETF, Bitcoin ETF especially, uh to do so well to have such high popularity in the market. And and that's that's a big thing. I mean, we're seeing billions of dollars being transitioned every single day at the New York Stock Exchange. All right. And so the SEC is kind of it's kind of probing. And doing her thing, right? So, you know how you know how the SEC is, okay? So overall, it is creating some fud in the market, and they are going. We're going to see a little bit of a dip, but <clears throat> we're also coming up to the Bitcoin halving. Okay, we're twenty three days away, roughly. From the next Bitcoin halving, Bitcoin right now is hanging around seven thousand four hundred, eight hundred and forty eight dollars. Ethereum about thirty five. Uh, BNB five eighty five. Solana one eighty five. So, 
Have you guys been stacking up some of those right mainnet cryptos I told you guys to get? The Solana, Ethereum, BNB, Smart Chain, just so you can start transitioning. So now uh, there is an asset here is very low, very cheap. Uh, and I think uh could be could be a good um I haven't seen much of a, a, a pump in it yet, at least maybe just when it launched. Okay. This one is available on Pancake Swap. Um and doesn't have let me see what I wanted to see. Where is it? Here you go. So it has a half a million dollar market cap, so it's still very low. It's got very low trading volume at about twelve thousand dollars, so very low. Um, and if I look at the, yeah, I want to look at, I want to look at the uh, BSC scan. We're looking at under a thousand uh, holders. So that I mean, there's not much. I, I wouldn't suggest you go ahead and throw a hold, you know, house on it. Just you know, whatever. You, if you if you can diversify, consider this one. Look at it in your portfolio. Do your own research. All right, we're looking at under a thousand holders with over ten thousand transfers, um, market supply of hundred thousand million billion, one trillion, and a market cap of under, uh, of under half of uh one million. So still pretty early. I'm glad you got some Solana. Yeah, Solana was easy, an easy buy when it was that low. Once, once Solana was under $50, any price does. All right, so let's look at the markets for today. Listen, we are seeing the markets just explode, okay? Uh, I mean, the gold market for me was 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 crazy, right? We're seeing gold trying to reach just new all-time highs all the time, right? We topped that two, 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 three. Okay, give a little bit of a swing swing movement here. Tipped at about two, two, one, six again, and now it's coming back down currently about two, two, oh, six for, uh, for gold, XAUUSD, right? I hope that you guys took profit on that gold trade that we took last week. Oh, not last week, but um, yeah, actually it is last week, yeah. And um, let me see. I want to take a look at overall. Yeah, overall picture. This market is looking lovely, right? Boom, continuation. Uh, there. I mean, looking at this chart, this thing can keep going higher. On a small time frame, we might get a retracement, but on a big time frame, like the one day, one week, even, we might see gold continue to escalate. Uh, maybe even hit twenty two fifty, twenty three. Okay. So definitely want to keep an eye on that, right? In terms of Bitcoin, Bitcoin continues to climb. We are getting close to the Bitcoin halving. There's nothing. The, the only the only big news we're seeing right now is uh, with Fidelity. So I don't know if you guys saw, but it's right here. Uh, right. $4.5 trillion asset manager Fidelity files for S1 form for spot Ethereum ETF with staking included. So they're uh, they're all coming after Ethereum now, right? They all that, that's why that's why the SEC wants to go ahead and start fucking around with Ethereum, because now we're seeing a main a, a mainnet token with such a huge open network, right? A huge platform to create multiple things, right? To token look look at BlackRock. BlackRock has filed to 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 start tokenizing. Right to start tokenizing items, to start tokenizing assets on the Ethereum platform. They file for the ETF for the Ethereum platform. Now you have Fidelity doing the same exact thing. Right? What happened last time that happened? They all followed the they all followed along, and before you knew it, Bitcoin ETF was approved and it just started taking off. Skyrocketed, fam. Completely skyrocketed. Okay. Now, let me ask you guys a quick question. I want to take a look um, before I oh, pop the news open. And um, any, anybody here trading gold? Looking at the price of gold, trading gold. Why do you think we're seeing a movement like this on gold? 
Anybody want to take a guess? For me, not yet. That's so good. All good. You know what? I have, I have an even better question. Because I want, I want to know, you know, those who do to those who don't. Who here doesn't trade yet? And I don't mean, I mean live. Who here does not trade live yet? Less physical gold available. Well, yes, I mean, that's always going to be a thing. We're always going to see less physical gold available as they keep mining it, but it's not going to drive the price like this. I actually want to, but I need knowledge about it. No problem. That's that's where we're going to start doing um some beginner stuff. So, um... Remember when I spoke to you guys about the on-risk and off-risk investments, okay? So you have on-risk. On-risk being when people put money in the markets that are volatile and moved by pretty much everyday events, right? So we're talking about US 30, uh, the, the Dow Jones, right? Uh, the S&P 500, the NASDAQ. So people invest this money into ETFs, right, into the S&P. Right, and they get on average, let's say, six percent returns by putting your money into the S and P five hundred. Okay, but when the market starts to give you signs and hints that hey, we could come down, uh, we could give you some retracement, we could do this, then people take their money off that investment, which is the on risk, and put it into the off risk investment, which is gold. Right, so they transition. To make it simple, they transition from an on risk investment that is controlled by what emotions news circumstances whatever right even mother nature believe it or not and then they remove it and put it into an investment that is mostly has to do with supply and demand that's the main thing supply and demand all right mostly with supply and demand now i have another i have another another one i want to talk to you about let's look back to what happened on monday what big event took place on monday we saw the collapse of that, what's it called? Key Keystone Bridge on in Baltimore, or that key bridge, okay? So, me, it was a huge catastrophe. It was crazy to watch. Right? I mean, I watched that video. That shit looked so on purpose. I mean, I don't know. I, I Maybe just me, but like the way that ship steered and the way the lights turned off, it's like somebody took over and just said, fuck it, let's just drive it right into that bridge, right? It looked a little shady. I'm just saying I know, you know, I'm just I'm just talking my talk, all right? But he, here's a here's what I, I did because, you know, me being the, the investor that I am, okay, I'm going to give you an example of how I use AI. You guys ready for this one? And I'm sorry, I'm, I have allergies. These allergies are fucking killing me, man. It's, it's terrible. Um, But if you have an iPhone, I don't have, I mean, I have iPhone and Android, but I, I'm doing it on my iPhone, right? There's this app free to use besides ChatGPT, and you don't have to pay to use the GPT-4 option here. Uh, but this is Copilot, okay? It is the, uh, oh, this one didn't save my chat. Oh, this one doesn't save my chat. I guess I have to sign in. I didn't make any account. I just did it, right? But I typed up something. Let me actually type it up again. Uh, okay, so you guys ready for this? It, it was like a movie, man. It was like a movie. It was crazy. But here's what I'm, I'm, I'm going to say it as I typed it, because I typed it in yesterday, but I guess I didn't say, it didn't make an account. So it didn't save. But here's, here's what I just typed. I want to hear what... What AI has to say, okay? Because I had the same expectation, right? I said, explain the effects, the collapse of the Baltimore, the Baltimore bridge will have on the economy for the remainder of the year, right? I think is what I wrote. Explain the effects, the collapse of the Baltimore bridge will have on the economy for the remainder of the year. And then I hit, you know, hit search or whatever. 
So it's it's doing this. It's thinking. I, mean, I want to see if it will. I want to see if it's gonna give me the same exact thing it gave me yesterday. Okay, it actually is. Okay, I'm gonna read this to you because this is exactly what I was thinking, and I'm like, this is gonna be, this is gonna be detrimental to the economy, to to the markets, right? Especially when it comes to supply and demand. Okay, so here's what it said. The collapse of the Francis Scott Key Bridge in Baltimore will have a significant economic impact beyond the city. Here are some key points, okay? Key points that will affect the economy. Number one, Port of Baltimore, the port, one of the busiest in the U.S., has halted vessel traffic indefinitely due to the bridge collapse. This disruption is expected to affect the flow of commerce in the country. Now, what is commerce, right? Retails, supply and demand, probably less cars, probably less stuff coming in from China, right? The port handles a substantial amount of international cargo, including imports and exports, look at that, of cars, light trucks, and other goods. In 2023, it handled a record 52.3 million tons of international cargo, worth about $80.8 billion. Now, again, I'm no conspiracy theorist. I just call I just call it like it is, right? And I kind of put two and two together. I'm not saying this is what it is, but I'm just trying to, I like to connect dots and see if they make, make sense, right? But it's funny that, and, and you can look this up. This happens every fucking year that we have an election here in the United States. It happens every year. Every time there's a major election in the United States, something big economically happens or something big non-economically happens that will affect the monetary future of the, of the country. Make sense? Every single one. In 2020, it was covid in 2024, now we have this bridge happening. Then we have hackers attacking, right? We have the booming of crypto. This, this is all that, okay? And it has to become some kind of major effect to disrupt the economy and say, oh, look at this. It fucked up. I fixed it. Vote for me, okay? Number two, here's the other one. This, this is the one that's going to impact the market the most. That's what I believe, right? Job impacts. The port supports over 15,000 direct jobs and more than 139,000 indirect jobs connected to the port activities generating almost $3.3 billion in total personal income. So let's take away $3.3 billion from personal income from the economy. What does that do, right? It puts people at risk to have homes foreclosed, cars re re uh, reprocessed, right? People start to eat. He, he, and here's the crazy part, right? And this is what I love, love watching this movie, right? And 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 not just the, this one, but so many other ones. But in that movie, The Big Short, right? There's one specific scene that I absolutely love the most, right? You know what? I want to play it for you because that's how much I love this scene, right? I want to play it for you. Let me, let me, uh, let me, where is it here, right? I'm going to play it for you. It's, uh, it's, uh, The Big Short. And I love this movie because I, you know, at first when I watched it and I saw that part, I'm like, that's bullshit. It doesn't make sense, right? Right. So the big short uh unemployment stats is the part uh this one right here, right? So this part, he talks about that every one percent of unemployment goes up, forty thousand people die on average. And I was like, that doesn't make sense. Like, how does unemployment going up one percent kill forty thousand people, right? And isn't he doesn't get into detail about it, but I looked it up, and it it turns out that you know when people go on unemployment, right, then the quality of life has to be drastically reduced because now they're living on a fixed income. So if they're used to making this amount, now they gotta make this amount. But their life is, their life cannot just fluctuate from here to here, right? You can't take grandma off her meds because you're making less money. You have to find other measures to do that. Okay, so check this out. I'm gonna play it for you. Make sure make sure the audio is good on my end. If you guys can hear it, let me start. Let me play it first. Here. Actually, you might not hear it. Hold up. One second. One second. I'll replay it for you. 
All right, so what do they do here? They made one, they made one of the biggest bets, which is the only ones they're the only ones that did it, right? Which is betting against the the, the triple A bonds, okay? The triple A CDO bonds that nobody else thought about. They were all just going against the shit ones, right? But check this out. I want you guys to listen to this. Can you hear it? Stop. 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 What? You have any idea what you just did? Come on, we just made the deal of our lifetimes. We should celebrate. You just bet against the American economy. Fuck yeah, we did. Yeah. Fuck yeah. Which means, oh. which means, if we're right, if we're right, people lose homes, people lose jobs, people lose retirement savings, people lose pensions. You know what I hate about fucking banking? It reduces people to numbers. Here's a number. Every 1% unemployment goes up, 40,000 people die. Did you know that? No. Oh. Did you know that? No, I didn't know that. We're just excited. Just don't fucking dig it. Right. Where are you going? Whoa, I just got really scared. Isn't that crazy? And that's true. I looked it up. It's legit. As a matter of fact, I think it's like 40,800 to be exact. Like that, That's like the... the, the um, the borderline number or the precise number, but it's crazy because that is exactly why it's all connected. So, you know, when you're, when, when we're betting against the economy, which I do all the time, you're pretty much betting on the fact that people are going to lose jobs, lose homes. People will die, right? Because they have to change their quality of life. They can't be, you know, doing the same thing they're always doing. Uh, they have to change what they eat. That's another one that I, I saw. Right. But even in today's economy, it doesn't even make sense. Right. So back in like 2008 and between 2008, 2012, when it was the biggest recession, right, that big collapse, um, people lost homes like they, they, they had whatever money was left and what they were doing to feed their family of five, six, whatever. Is that every day it was McDonald's. Every day, McDonald's, every single day. Do you not think that's going to have some kind of effect on your health? Absolutely. Right? Kids' health, grown ups' health. All right, who's in the family? Grandmas, parents, kids, right? It's going to affect everybody. So that's why that's why I looked it up. Is they change what they eat, they change what they take, they change all that shit. Right? And it affects it affects the people. And it is that is that small change. So think like one percent, right? Think about one percent of three hundred billion uh three hundred million people. That's a large number. Yeah, that's true. I seen that man. That McDonald's is. I can't. I can't. I can't stomach that shit anymore. I don't know why. I cannot. And now, exactly. That's what I was getting. That's my point, right? That food is no longer cheap. That have you seen the prices of these things lately? They're. I mean, they're expensive. And if and, and you know and you know when I started to get the feel that fast food restaurants were going to get expensive, it was even before the economy started getting this shitty, right? I realized that fast food was going to get even more expensive when I started to see the way they changed the buildings, right? So McDonald's went from this happy kid place with the clown and uh, what's the, the purple guy, Grimace, right? And his friends and, and the robber. And now they're into like this hippity upper class restaurant where you can order your thing on a tablet, Right. And now the workers are getting paid like fifteen dollars an hour just to start. That's how I knew price was going to go up. It was before all of this even started. Crazy. I worked there when I was a teenager and gained thirty pounds in a month. Whoa! In a month? That's crazy. Does McDonald's even have any playground sections for kids? No, they don't. They took. They got rid of all of that. Now what did it do? Now you go sit down. And they're trying to imitate Starbucks. They're trying to, you know, everywhere you sit has a charger or a wall plug. They're inviting you to come in, hang out. There's, there's no, there's not a kid area anymore. They got rid of the playground because they know that if they get rid of the playground, people will sit there longer, probably order more if they're actually doing work there. Right? They got fancy Wi-Fi now. Now you have, you can order shit from your, you can even scan the table. The order is crazy. Yeah, so that's how I knew. When I started seeing that happen, that's how I knew. Their tea doesn't even use real sugar. They quit real sugar like 20 years ago. 
Crazy. I no longer hear about McDonald's birthday party. Yeah, they don't do McDonald's birthday parties anymore, right? That's done. That's a, that's a done deal. McDonald's gave me my first stretch mark. Oh, but you should tattoo it. You should get that tatted on you. <laughs> Just like this solo storm and they say all phones. Okay, yo, Michelle. That's that that's my that was my next thing, right? That was my next point I was going to get to. So the next thing that they're talking about, right? Is uh let me put my let me put my little my little tunes back on just on uh where'd it go? All right, so the next thing that I was talking about was uh we have this solar eclipse coming up next week. Okay, is it next week? It's on April 8th. We had a lunar one not too long ago. Now we have the solar one coming up. And I've been hearing the alerts they've been sending out. And they're saying, like, you know, get your wife, get, get your phones prepared, charge your phones, get batteries, get flashlights, gas up your cars, uh, get some radios, all that, get some water. And I'm like, for, for an eclipse? But why is it is is there really some solar activity going on, or is it a cover up for somebody else fucking with your Wi-Fi from another country, right? That they don't want you to think about. Yeah, it says uh, on FEMA. That's where you find it. Yeah. So I don't know. Listen, right now, it's hard to trust anybody. Hell, don't even trust me. I can be talking shit right now. <laughs> But because, but listen, all great change, all great change has to have huge resistance behind it. And you're going to see it, right? You guys ever, you guys ever heard of the word, the, the word reform, right? Reform means a change for the better, right? So when we left the Renaissance era, it was a reform because now we're leveling up, even though it was great during that time. We no longer want to ride horses around or shit in holes in the back of your house. We want to do plumbing. Okay, so then we start we start revolutionizing. We start growing and we turn into, you know, a reform. But we're coming into an era that besides what happened in 21 and 2020, besides that, because that was the biggest transfer of wealth we I have ever seen. And it happened so quickly, Right. I mean, I was one of them. Some of you guys were one of them. I mean, so much money made. And we're coming into a point where we're seeing the same exact thing happen. We're coming into a point where we're, we're, we're seeing the greatest transfer of wealth being created, but not really transfer, but rather creation or reform of old wealth into new wealth. For those people that are actually investing and taking the time to learn and understanding the, the, the times that we're in. See, the difference, the difference between our parents, right? For example, I'm 32. I'm a millennial, okay? My, my mother, she's a baby boomer or whatever, right? But we can't live the same way they did. Think about it. What's the number one thing they tell you when you went to school, right? Get a, get a, go to school, get good grades, graduate from college, get a job save your money, and retire, okay? Prior to 1971, that was all great. You could do that. Prior to 1971, before the dollar was removed from the gold standard and it became debt. But now we are, we are dealing with the biggest shit coin of all time, which is the U.S. dollar, okay? Unlimited supply, over $2 trillion, no, over $30 trillion in market cap, unlimited supply, shitholders, massive debt. So you can't do that anymore because, see, back in the day, your parents could be making, what, 50000 a year combined and buy a house that's worth 70000 That makes sense. But we're doing the same thing now. Average household income is $58,000. Average home in Florida right now is $505,000. It doesn't add up. The price of goods go up, income stays here. 
Okay, but you want you want to know where the part changes? Here's where the big change. This is why I call the biggest transfer transfer of wealth. Okay, the wealth our parents or the wealth that the baby boomers had was all in wills, trust, bank accounts, deposit boxes. That was the wealth that they had. Right. For example, when my father passed away, I got his deposit box, I got his business, and I got his houses. That's the wealth that my father left me. Because he's a baby boomer. Years down the road, when it's our time to move on to the next phase of life, right? What will we leave our kids? We will leave phrases, passwords, usernames. That's the next level of wealth. Okay? You're going to tell me that they're going to have to go through probate to get access to your crypto wallet? No, they don't even know about it. <laughs> they don't even know about it. But... The biggest transfer is wealth is not transferring from, you know, you leaving a house to your kids or you having this much money. The biggest transfer of wealth, in my opinion, and I believe this is true, the biggest transfer of wealth is knowledge, right? Because us millennials and even new generations after that have understood that we can't make a living doing that. And those that refuse to, to, to learn it the easy way are learning it the hard way now, okay? Remember, they learned it in 2020 when their job said, you know what? We don't need you. Fuck off. You've been working 20, 30 years for them, 10 years, whatever, and you just lost your job. But this knowledge, well, this knowledge, see, my, I, long after I'm gone, my son's grandkids can watch me, watch the recordings of me teaching this stuff. And if it still applies, guess what? They can still use it. Get it? It's crazy. So that to me is the new transfer of wealth because we always have to learn what are we doing next right how do we so, um somebody had asked me uh, a cop actually that was, i got into and asked me how, how did you get into crypto how did you get like what made you like what door did you take to get to crypto i said i just got in and i knew nothing about it and then when i was in it i learned all i could about it and then i became good but it takes time. It takes the ability to learn. Like how, somebody asked uh, on one of the topics they wanted they wanted to go over today. They said, you know, let's talk about how you can let's talk about how to find these good projects, and uh, how do you do that? You you want to know how to do it? Research. There really isn't a magic formula as to how to find the good cryptos. All you have to do is go through all the cryptos that you could find, read their projects, and I told you the basic things I look for are going to be things like market cap. Holders, you know, and then how old they are. Did it pump already? Did it fake already? And that's it. And what did I tell you? The future is AI, right? Speaking of AI, I'm going to finish reading the last part of this. So we talked about job impacts, $3.3 billion being removed from the economy. Number three, there's another big one. Supply chains. Supply and demand will be affected. Wait until you, you want to buy a car today? You want to buy a car right now? Well, shit. You're probably going to end up paying more because now there's less cars coming in being imported from China, Japan, Germany, because now we lost access to the port, the biggest port of the United States, right? Uh, yes, Tennessee is crazy. Now, I'm a realtor, and so many people cannot afford to buy here or even afford rent to set in Tennessee. In Tennessee. Can you imagine that? That's why I wish I had this info when I was in my 20s and 30s, not too old. Yeah, I mean, I mean, shit. I wish <laughs> I wish I was not fucking around at the age of 10 playing video games and playing my friends instead of just I would have just wished to be buying Bitcoin. Imagine that. I don't know. 18, 10, 15, right? That's that's the thing. And then, you know, when all this, when all of this, when we say things like that, we realize how valuable time really is. And how limited it is, right? Think about it. The average person in the United States lives to be like, what, 76 years old? 76, 86, 76, right? You take away your baby year, take away, let's take away at least 18 years of that in the beginning. And then the rest, and then you spend all this time sleeping. That's why I don't like to sleep. I don't like to sleep. I'm at, I'm at a point in my entrepreneurship career, and I don't know if this is you, and it may be good, it may be bad, but I'll, I'll, I guess we'll see, but... Um, I'm at a point in my entrepreneurial career where I'm doing so much and I have my hands full with so much and I love to grow 
my businesses and my knowledge that I feel like if I sleep, I'm going to miss out on so much. Like I, there's so much time. Like I could be doing this instead of fucking taking a nap. You know what I mean? But then there's times that my body goes like, sit the fuck down, get to sleep. Like it'll, like, <laughs> it'll happen. Like I took an Uber once. I was at the airport. I had to Uber back home. And I just dozed off in an Uber. I dozed off. And I woke up and I was right like a block from my house. And the Uber driver looked at me and he said, he said, bro, you was out, man. You were, you were, snoo you were like a baby. <laughs> I was out. It was, it was about like 40 minute ride. But he looked at me and said, you was out, man. He goes like, damn, you must, he goes, what do you do? I'm like, oh, I'm an entrepreneur. I teach. He goes like, yeah, get some rest, bro. But okay, that's what Uber driver, that's what Uber rides are for, right? Take naps. Let's see. Um, what was the name of that token you were talking about in the beginning? Oh, Vegas Inu. Vegas Inu. Vegas Inu. I think it was Amanda. Yeah, it was definitely Amanda, the one that put me onto this one first. She said it, she showed it to me when they were doing the uh promoting the ICO. Now uh, they launched and here they are. So uh, okay, good. We got that. I heard someone say that they tried to buy a used car in 2021 Ford truck and was quoted an interest rate of 29%. 29%. Crazy, right? And legally here in Florida, I think this is maybe it top is 22. They can't go over 22 unless they change that. I haven't, I haven't heard anything about that. Tennessee is a hot market because people are fleeing New York, New Jersey, and California. Yeah, they are. Um, I know Tennessee is also the big market, especially Knoxville. Uh, it's a big market for rentals. I have a lot of people that invest in real estate and they're buying properties in Tennessee, uh, especially Knoxville, and they're renting them out, right? And the pro and since since homes across the entire nation are appreciating, right? Are appreciating, not depreciating. They're appreciating in, pr in price. Uh, then what they do is that when they buy them, they force appreciate them, they rent them out, they refinance them, right? And then they buy another one. That's the real estate play right there. But not everyone can do that. Glad I bought in 2018 before everything went great. Oh, you probably got a beautiful interest rate, Amanda. Well, sorry, how much can you refer MetaMask to people? I like MetaMask. MetaMask is good. I don't hold coins and I don't hold coins in MetaMask. I hold coins in my ledger. I do not hold coins in MetaMask. I hold my NFTs there, but no coins. Apologies, just join the base memes next Saturday. What's up, my brother? I'm in Knoxville. Oh, you're in Knoxville. Okay, good, good. You mentioned Shiba has already made its high. Did I understand it correctly? Shiba? No. I mean, Shiba kind of, Shiba's kind of retracing right now. As a matter of fact, Doge is taking off. Doge having a nice, a nice little bull pump today, right? So far, it's up, and we're at twenty two cents right now with Shiba. Okay. Um, but no Shiba. Where is Shiba? Shiba, what is Shiba up right now? Shiba is up seventeen percent for the week. Okay, so right now it's starting. It's starting, it's starting its move for the day. Shiba Inu. So I recommend, listen, Shiba Inu. I'm behind Shiba Inu. What's the other one? Koshi Kishu. Is it Kishu? I have it on, my, on my, one of my wallets. Kishu Inu. But yeah, no, Shiba, Shiba's still gold, man. Still golden. Now, will Shiba ever hit a penny? I don't think so. I don't think it will, but you don't need it. And again, I'll say this again. You don't need it to hit a penny. You don't really need it. Uh, Pigeon Forge, Serve, Severeville, and Latinburg also. Okay. Should we be looking to invest like Alliance Block, Rockline, Rio for our, since BlackRock built their own token? Yeah. So I'm going to, I, I, I want to wait a little bit on, uh, on this whole BlackRock thing because I, I, I you want to get early, but I don't want to get in too early because I don't think it's going to be as popular as it should be right, right off the gate because we just get, we just got the ETF market launched. Uh, tokenization, I, listen, NFTs and major tokenization will not really take large, uh, scale until after the Bitcoin halving pump, not the Bitcoin halving, the Bitcoin halving pump. Okay. 
So you want to accumulate as much Bitcoin as you can now, now, right now at this price. Okay, you want to accumulate a Bitcoin as much as you can now. Let the pump happen. Then the pump will drop the price, right? The, the Bitcoin halving will drop the price. It will. It's, an, it's inevitable. And we're going to see a retracement. Maybe we might even come down to mid-50s to, to, to low 60s, okay? Then what you do, once price does that, you accumulate some more, as much as you can. And then from that moment, and this will probably happen around election time or prior to that, remember September? September is always the, the, the go month. I love it. I told you guys every year, September is always the go month. That's when you see the economy really push hard before they enter that quarter four. So we're going to see big pushes on cryptocurrency and you want to buy as much as you can. And then we'll see the pump to the seventies, the eighties and nineties. And then we'll see what we trace back before, before the year is even over. Okay. In Jackson, Tennessee. Beautiful. What do you think about Pepe coins? Buy Pepe coins. Buy Pepe. Pepe is great. House also in profit. There you go. House is deep in profit. Yeah, you know, I'm I'm buying. I'm 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 looking to buy a house this year. Um, I kind of have to. Um, I have to buy a house this year, but you know, I need I need land. I got too many cars. I got too many fucking cars, man. I got 15 cars. So will it affect Ethereum movement? Um yeah, everything. Remember, Mama Duck is Bitcoin. Baby Duck is everyone below Bitcoin. Okay. Mama Duck moves first. Hey, okay, right here. Mama Duck moves first. And then all the little babies will follow. Make sense? And is is coin what was that? Is Coinbase memes like Toshi, DJ, and Brett, the new Solano? Is Coinbase memes? What do you mean Coinbase memes? House is also in profit. Keep having offers. Yeah, man. You're probably going to get a lot, too. You're going to get a lot. But, you know, the other, the other thing that I wanted to... Uh, speak, speaking of houses now, since we're talking about uh, houses, this is the this is the big problem people are are going to run into. And, I, and I'm seeing this happen, right? Let's say that you, you have a home, right? And, you're, and your home is... The average home... The average... The average homeowner... Um, at least in my market, um, the average homeowner right now is sitting on about two hundred thousand dollars of equity in their home, right? On average. So, with that being said, people don't want to sell their homes because they think it's gonna go up higher. Cool. So what they do is that they're trying to refinance for a lower interest rate. Now, I'm talking mostly about the people that bought a house at a high interest rate, right? Or those that are looking to get a lower interest rate. And what, what they will do is that the bank will offer you, you know, the world and the, 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 the evidence and the earth. And they'll say, we're going to give you this. You know, you're going to pay us this percentage. You might be saving one, two percent, maybe half a percent, which is less cool. No problem. You'll pay less a month. But now what happens is that you restart your entire loan all over again. And now... You're going to be paying, like, I'll give you an example, right? If you have a 30-year loan, ten the first 10 years are mostly interest. The first 10 years of your mortgage is mostly interest. So if you have a home for 12 years and you refinance to get a lower interest rate or you pull the equity out of the home or you try to do all this stuff, then what the bank will do is they'll just, okay, we're going to refinance your home. We're going to put you on another 30-year loan. You're going to have less payments because now you have less debt but you're going to have your interest payments low. And what you do is that you take that debt you could have paid off in 20 years and you extended it again for 30 just so that you can pay 200 bucks less a month. And that's what people are not understanding. Okay. And then you'll be in, that's what, that's what mortgage stands for, right? Mortgage stands for payment till death. Mort is death, mortgage, okay? Payment. 
<clears throat> yes, and I have five acres, but I'm not selling homes with that much property. Okay, well, five acres, five acres is beautiful. So that's enough room to put a nice jacuzzi on base layer two. What do you think about just taking out the equity and getting a new home? So, Jesus, that, that's a good example. I, I always promote that, but as long as you're doing the right thing with that, okay? As a matter of fact, somebody had asked me, um, you know, they have they, they have money they're coming into and they're looking at selling their home to invest in crypto. That's what they told me. And I said, listen, well, like, you no, know, first run your numbers. How, how, how long you had the home for, how much equity you have in the home, how long you had it and how much you owe. OK, so don't just sell your house to buy crypto. Right. Because your house is also an asset if you use it the right way. Right. So taking the loan out against your home. No problem against it. You get a helo line of credit against your house. Pull equity from the home, but don't pull equity from the home to buy a new car or to go on vacation, right? Take the equity out of the house and you use it as a down payment to buy another house. And then you buy another asset that could appreciate in price. Maybe, maybe you rent that one out, okay? And you keep doing that over and over again. That's called the BRRRR process, B-R-R-R, -R, right? Buy, rehab, re rent, refinance. Buy, rehab, rent, refinance. So if you keep that process up, you know, your portfolio will look at, looking fluffy. I meant to say, are you looking into mean coins like Toshi, Brett, Degen, or Base Layer? Uh, no, uh, Toshi, yes. I haven't looked at the other ones yet. Wait, Brett? I think I gave you guys Brett. We bought Brett already. Brett, we did. Toshi, I'm looking into. And Degen or Base Layer, I have not. He look, yep. Home equity line of credit. Here will be his down payment. Here it would be as a down payment for a new property and then renting this house, living in. This is blocking it. Living in the new house for a year or two while I fix it, then re repeating. Yeah, repeat the process. That's called the BRRR process, right? Burr. You buy, you rehab, you rent, and you refinance. And you keep doing that over and over again. You go your portfolio that way. But if you want to use the money to buy crypto, sure, maybe take a little bit. But don't take too much. Don't like don't take a line of credit out of a hundred thousand and put the whole hundred k into Bitcoin. You don't want to do that. You know what I mean? Diversify every piece of cash that you can find. Remember, the point is to have more crypto, not more dollars. Dollars is the shit coin. It is a depreciating asset. Bitcoin 71.5. Oh, we are almost there. 2,000 away from the all-time high. <clears throat> All right. Let me see if I finish this. Let me finally get through this. Okay. Supply chains. Here's a good one. The bridge collapse disrupts supply chains, especially for autos, construction machinery, and coal. Baltimore is a top port for automobile shipments, having imported and exported more than 750,000 vehicles in 2022 alone. Immediate impacts on supply may be unlikely due to the existing inventory, right? So what did I tell you? You might not see it now, but as the year goes on, supply and demand will kick in. But sustained disruptions could have broader consequences. Traffic and Easter. The collapse ahead of Easter could worsen traffic for families and trucks traveling over the holiday weekend. Additionally, at least 10 commercial ships bound for Baltimore were forced to drop anchor in nearby waters after port traffic was suspended. The full extent of the economy impact of the economic impact will depend on how long the port remains closed and the efforts to restore transportation links. Maryland Governor Westmore declared a state of emergency, emphasizing the severity of the situation. This was all written by AI, by the way. So, pretty cool. Any questions for me, fam? Uh, let's see. Uh, can you explain the process of equity use of your current home towards a new home? The process of equity. So, yeah. So I'll give you an example. 
let's say you buy a house for let's say you bought a home for 300,000, 300, right? 300k. And you bought it a few years ago and you locked in maybe 3% or so, right? Every time you make a payment towards your home, you build up equity in your house, right? You're freeing up debt. But then also you can force appreciate the value of your home by, you know, putting it in a garage, maybe adding a dwelling unit, maybe changing the, the paint, right? Fixing the outside. Um, you know, things like that that are free that appreciate price in the homes. You know, things two major things that appreciate prices in homes are bathrooms and kitchens, right? So you do that, you appreciate the price of the home. So let's say you you force appreciate the home and now your house is not worth three hundred thousand, but now it's worth maybe three fifty. OK, but you've been paying a home for the last five years and you, you know, a large payment of it is interest, but you also pay some principal. So let's say that you're, you you bought a house for three hundred thousand. You put you you bought it on FHA. So you have a five percent down payment. OK, so you put what, five grand down or so, whatever. Right. And then you've been paying it. So let's say now you only owe like like two eighty on the home. You're like 280 and you had it for four years or so and you bought it for 300 is worth 350, which means that you have about $70,000 of equity in the home, 70,000, which means that you, your house is worth more than what it's worth now than what you owe. I'm sorry. Your house is worth more than what you owe. So you can go to a bank and get a loan against that difference. Get it? So you can take seventy thousand dollars, or let's say fifty, take it out, and you get a loan for it, and then you take that money and you go look at another house. And maybe the house is worth half a million dollars, and you can put down since you have an active FHA, you have to go conventional, right? <clears throat> you go conventional, put twenty percent out on the house, and you repeat the process. And you can do it over and over and over again. Make sense? What sources do you reply for your crypto and world news? Reply on um, crypto news, CMC, mostly those pages. Would you recommend someone to sell Pepe coins to wait for Bitcoin retraces? No, not at all. Pepe coins is too, the, the price is too low to sell it. I wouldn't sell Pepe, not at least until you make some decent profit. Is that why Biden jumped on the chance to help Baltimore but ignores Hawaii, Texas, and Flint? Who knows? Maybe. As a matter of fact, didn't they listen? And this, this, this is just again me thinking, right? Okay, and 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 agree with agree with me or not as I say this because I want to make sure that I'm I'm saying this correctly, right? Big industrial ships hits boom, bridge bridge collapses. Who pays for the bridge? What do you think? Big industrial ship crashes into bridge, destroys bridge, bridge is down. Baltimore cannot use bridge. Baltimore fucked for some time. Who pays for bridge? We do. Taxes. Can I be honest with you? You're all wrong. I'll make it even simpler for you. Okay, you ready? You have a house. A big semi truck rams into your home. Your home is destroyed. Who pays for your home? Exactly. Insurance. Right? I got rear ended by a semi truck. My Audi Q7 is destroyed. Who pays for my Audi Q7? Insurance. Same thing here. Big boat, a lot of money on boat, crash little bridge, bridge gets fucked. Who pays for bridge? Insurance, but somehow the government is trying to pass a bill, okay, to fund the payments to build the bridge. You know what that's called? That's called bullshit. Because now what they want to do is create this unnecessary bill to shove stupid laws in it or some dumb crap we don't need, right? And then have it go through Congress and even 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 Congress. Right? And the house of reference, like, what the fuck are we doing here? Why are we here? Shouldn't the insurance pay for this? And the insurance will pay for it. Guarantee you. Those boats cannot operate on open seas. And in this country, you can't even drive a car 
without insurance. That boat has the best insurance. They're going to pay for that. So why is the government trying to say, "Oh, we're going to take care of it," right? We're going to take, we're going to, we're going to get some funding, and we're going to pump money into that bridge, and it's going to be the best bridge you've ever seen. Why? It's not your job. Fuck off. Right? Let them deal with it. You don't see me call the White House saying, "Yo, somebody fucking ran my Q7. Can you guys pay for it? Who's going to fund this one?" No, <laughs> the insurance took care of it. They got it. Doesn't make any sense. Right? Is it just me? <laughs> I'm 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 over here looking at this like, what? Like how, why? It's crazy. It's, and that's what I'm saying. Some and some people don't 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 have like they don't think like that. They go like, oh, so good. You know, they're gonna pass a bill. They're gonna put some fucking money into the bridge. Maybe we can have less potholes now. Why? It's not. It's not your job. Like they got it. Like let the insurance company run their assessments, send their appraisers, you know, and whatever. Right? They're gonna pay out the families that were on the bridge, that the people of the families on the on the bridge that passed away. You know, unfortunately, they're gonna pay the families. They're gonna pay the bridge. Right? You know who has more money than countries and banks? Insurance companies do. They have the most money. Look it up. Insurance company have the most amount of money. They have a fucking boatload of money. They're going to pay for that. But somehow they want to pass a bill. They'll be like, nah, don't worry. We got it. We're paying attention to Baltimore. We got it. Listen. One thing I learned about this country is they don't stick their noses where the profits are not in. Right? Why are we in certain countries we shouldn't? We don't belong in? Because there's profit there to be made. Simple. That simple. It is a profit world, and that is the unfortunate truth. I even learned that for profits are for profit. Did you know that? Non, um, I even learned that nonprofits are for profit. That's that's that was the one that I meant to say, right? I got this dude. Listen, business business fucking genius, and he gave me the whole play. He said, "Yo, you should start your business as a, as a nonprofit." And I'm like, "Why?" This is a nonprofit is like, yo, don't get it twisted. He says nonprofits are for profit. He says, but the benefits you get as a nonprofit, psh, astronomical. I looked it up, did a research, and I was like, damn. That's when people tell me, yo, I work for a nonprofit. I'm like, fucking greedy bastard. <laughs> Crazy. But good questions. Good, good engagement, fam. Anybody have any other questions? I'm over here rambling. They're going to start blocking me and shit. Too much truth spoken. That's why people don't see my lives anymore, man. No, we're all good. <laughs> all right, fam. I'm going to go ahead and let you guys go. Have a great rest of your week. We are ending. Listen, we are ending quarter one this week. Okay. I want to take a look at this, these news popping up, okay? Uh, today we had pending home. Look, I told you, look, pending home sales were above 1.6% on pending home sales. So they're up, okay? We're up on the pending home sales. Um, unemployment claims uh, down by 2,000. Final GDP was up 3.4%, okay? And then uh, today is... Today is Thursday. Tomorrow, right here, core PCE price index. I'm not trading tomorrow. I'm not trading tomorrow. You got a huge European holiday. You got core PCE price index. Well, tomorrow is Good Friday, right? And then uh, Jerome Powell will speak tomorrow, all right? My opinion on XRP. Listen, XRP right now, XRP is a sleeper, right? I don't, I don't, I don't want to sell it, but I, I don't want to buy anymore. If you have it already, good. If you want to buy some more. I wouldn't recommend it, but sure, why not? It's, it's going to be for later, but there's so many things we could do now before the XRP train actually takes off. Can you recommend one Can you recommend one special coin for me? Yes, I did. Vegas Inu. Have a Zoom where you just talk about conspiracy theory stuff. Yo, I might even start a podcast. Somebody told me to start a podcast. I might even do it. Somebody told me to start a, start a podcast. I might even start a podcast. 
All right, fam. Much love. Have a great rest of your week. I'll see you all in the next one. All right. Take care, everyone. Oh. Come on now. Oh, look. Am I, am I bugging? There we go. <laughs>